one game, the Backyard Brawl. Students camped out overnight and just before 6 o'clock this evening claimed their seats to watch their beloved Mountaineers against their bitter arch rivals from the north, the Pittsburgh Panthers, leaders of the Big East Conference. We are set for another edition of this historic rivalry and it all unfolds from the WVU Coliseum where it's making headline news. It comes your way next. WVU and Pittsburgh, Big East Conference basketball. From the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, we bring you the 172nd meeting of Pitt in West Virginia, the Backyard Brawl, the latest chapter of this long-standing rivalry matches two of the best in the Big East, and something's got to give here. WVU undefeated in conference play at home, Pitt a perfect road record in the Big East. Hello, college basketball fans. Welcome to the raucous WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. Glad to join us tonight. Well, this long-standing rivalry goes all the way back to February of 1906. Now, in that first game, Pittsburgh won 30-25. We expect to see a lot more points tonight. 75 miles separate the campuses, Pitt and WVU. Panthers had some trouble winning here after their 90-minute trip on I-79 South. Last year, Pittsburgh won 2-3, head-to-head -head with West Virginia, including the quarterfinals of the Big East Tournament. And we welcome in former WVU head coach Bucky Waters. So, Coach, you were here in the 1960s. You know about this rivalry. What makes it so special? Well, I think distance for one thing, but mostly it's the fans. For whatever reason, the hate between these two schools is generated by the fact that if you go to Pittsburgh, you go to the airport, you run into them, and they let you know it. To judge your rivalry, who do they want to talk about in June, July, August? The fans create the interest. They put pressure on the players, and they put pressure on the coaches. And that's why this place will be rocking. And they're all going to be watching two players involved with Star Watch tonight, LeVance Fields for Pittsburgh. He'll be going head-to-head -head with Deshaun Butler, great freshman for West Virginia. Well, LeVance Fields is called the general for good reason. The 5'10 Brooklyn sophomore runs the show. And tonight, he's got to handle a rock crowd but he's got talent to go with him in the last three games only three turnovers in 89 minutes and oh yes he can score 15 points over those last three games on the other side this week's rookie of the week in the Big East Conference the Sean Butler native of New Jersey has really been outstanding yes he has and he destroyed New Jersey in this week beat Seton Hall Rutgers very quick comes off the bench Average is only 22 minutes a game, but 10 points. He's going to be a good one. The fans are ready for Big East Conference basketball, and they're ready for the latest edition of the Backyard Brawl from Morgantown. Tonight's Big East game is brought to you by... Hyundai with quality that lets them offer America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. By Red Lobster's Jumbo Shrimp at Red Lobster, starting at $11.99. And by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Jerry Allen West, a native of West Virginia, the all-time greatest Mountaineer. Established 17 WVU records. His team 61 and 12 while he was a regular. Here in Morgantown, he didn't play in this building, the WVU Coliseum, full to the rafters to watch these starting lineups. These teams average within a tenth of a point of one another in scoring this year. They're that evenly matched. WVU and Pitt. First regular season matchup of two, and we're set to go. Tim Higgins, Paul Jensen, Michael Stevens, the officials tonight. Rob Pitt Sutter, was Aaron Gray was jumping up here. In the Big East preseason, West Virginia was picked well. And the reason this game probably isn't national is West Virginia has been a huge surprise. And you'll see why shortly. Pittsburgh and a man-to-man -man start. And extra step. Antonio Graves travels. The changing defenses that West Virginia employs are a problem. There's a good shot of Jamie Dixon, who followed Ben Holland, and now has clearly established himself as a very fine coach. Here's Joe Alexander from 15, the first two of the night in the latest edition of the Backyard Brawl. Alexander has been a big surprise this year for West Virginia scoring almost 13 a game. Dave, he didn't even play 
against Pitt last year as a freshman. High low play. Gray tries with the left. And a nice tip in. Levon Kendall has his first bucket. Pitt man for man. Harris Nichols off for Alexander had the first bucket. Young for Nichols. Frank Young top of the key handles here. Boy, you got to play the West Virginia perimeter tough. They love that three. Nice feed down low for Ruoff. Here's Young. Short on a three. Fields running. Graves. Some room for two. Antonio Graves got loose for the stuff. <laughs> no. No, not even Lawrence Welk would claim that step. That was a great move. Senior from Mansfield, Ohio. 13 times this year, Graves has scored in double figures for Pitt. You know what was key about that, Dave, is that even though it was a fast break, they were so under control and looked for the openings. It wasn't a blast and potential charge. Alex Ruff misfires on a three. I put the rebound for Pitt. Graves had to stuff a moment ago. Here's Gray, double team. They Kick like out. to they like go inside out. They like to play off Gray. Ruoff running. Has two off the glass. Great feed from Alexander. Fields for Kendall, a senior from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Had two earlier in this first half on the tip. Fields for Cook. Too strong. Gray had the rebound. Ruoff comes down with it for WVU. And the Mountaineers are running. Both of these teams would like to get some transition baskets because the half-court defense of both is very tough to handle. Oh, my, look. Wide open. Kendall free. Couldn't handle a pass, though. Great job on the baseline by Levon Kendall to save it and keep the pit possession alive. Double team is Gray, too strong. A tip, Graves off the glass on the far side. How about Antonio Graves up high? The Panthers on the offensive board are making uh, Coach John Beeline a little upset. He doesn't think his defense is that bad, but you can't give him those follow-ups. 6'3", 190. Sky for that tip. Young baseline. Skip pass, good ball movement, Alexander. It's a three. Way too long. Kendall and Fields running again here. When you're shooting those threes, as West Virginia does, there are a lot of long rebounds. Now, big fella with the soft paws. Aaron Gray's first two. Preseason Big East player of the year. The seven-footer from near Allentown, Pennsylvania. Yeah, he was the most improved the year before. How's that for rapid recovery, huh? Lost a lot of weight, worked very hard, and it has paid off. Pass from Kenneth Ruoffs. Gray steps in front, drives, he's fouled. And Antonio to the free throw line. Early on, Pittsburgh in control of this game, Bucky. They like the pace. We'll tell you more about that when we return. 8-4. Jamie Dixon's team's had nine days off. Their last game with Villanova was in January. First game of February, no problem early on. Lots of running and gunning here in Morgantown. For early lead for Pittsburgh, a big surprise because out of 200 potential minutes, Big East play at home for WVU. They trail all three minutes, 26 seconds. That is until tonight. Things changing for John Beeline, the fifth-year head coach here at West Virginia, native of Western New York, near Buffalo, the 20th coach all time in WVU history. Has just been fabulous, taking his team twice, at least as far as the Sweet 16. He's been good every place he's been most uh, notably the last ones were richmond and canisius the man can coach non-shooting foul there graves involved in the contact jamie smolligan just through the game for west virginia helps with the steal on the inbounds play don't look for a lot of turnovers in this game you're watching the nation's first and second teams in assist turnover ratio Pitt is uh, is number one by a very slim margin west virginia number two both of these clubs take care of the basketball, and that's a credit, and that's a credit to the coaches. Look at the numbers. That's amazing. Pittsburgh 12 turnovers a game. 
WV just over 11. Drew off drives, kick out, blocking foul call by Tim Higgins. And Levon Kendall, a 6'10 senior, tries to get position. You know, we talked to him today, Dave, and I kidded him. I said, well, you're from Canada, Vancouver. I said, did they, did they uh, pressure you to play hockey? And he said, no, soccer. I almost went into soccer. And he would have been a pretty awesome goalie. He was a goalkeeper on the soccer pitch as Ronald Ramon comes in. Great three-point shooter. Uh, junior for Pittsburgh out of New York City. Very interesting back now with him and his father, a professional basketball player in the Dominican Republic. Pretty good goalkeeper, huh? 6'10", you cover a lot of the space in soccer, I'd say there. You get through the whole field, you get down close to the goal, you look up, you're not you're not too pleased to be there. Here's Young from the free throw line. Too strong. Small get a hand on the rebound as it transfers from Butler, and Graves had a nice first half up here so far. The Mountaineers haven't had many open looks. Every shot's been contested. Gray for Graves. Antonio, too strong baseline, blew off the head of the rebound. Brought in by Sam Young, who was fouled just off the pit bench. Pitt's been dominating the boards. The two offensive rebounds, they turned into baskets very early in the game. Young picks up his first, team second. Keith Benjamin checks it. Number one makes his first appearance of the night for Pitt Jr. from Mount Vernon, New York, near New York City. Jamie going to his bench early and often. I don't think that ride from Pittsburgh down here at 70 miles took too much out of them, do you? They look pretty good, considering they've had all this time off. Young down low, powerful move by Sam Young off the pit bench oh. for his first bucket. He was just surrounded by gold jerseys. Pittsburgh, a lot of time off due to quirk in their schedule. And Jamie Dixon told us this morning that a shoot around the team had a spirited scrimmage over the weekend, trying to simulate game conditions. There's a turnover. Two 12-minute halves, and it looks pretty good, like they've come through because Sam Young. Watch, come, move. come down the baseline. The weak side help is there. It draws a crowd, but nobody puts a clamper on them. West Virginia, John Beeline calls this team his most athletic. Uh, there's, a, there's a good indication. There's where Pitt's beating them off the offensive board, but he calls this his most athletic team. But tonight, they're being whipped on the boards. Graves the kick out. Benjamin from the short. Young has the offensive chance here for West Virginia. Nichols a drive. And a foul first, says Mike Stevens, one of our three officials here tonight. Finish that story, Bucky, on the scrimmage that Pittsburgh had. Some of the media was pressuring Jamie Dixon to open that up to the public because the team hadn't played so long up at the Peterson Event Center on the Pitt campus. The fans are really <laughs> anxious to see their team play again. Now, the players didn't pick all the sides. Cook has had some influence, but it was a very good scrimmage, they said, to keep them in game condition. I know one thing, the, the Mountaineer Maniacs are good, but, but so is the Oakland Zoo. The students at Pitt uh, take this very seriously as well. Kendall back in, the All-American Gray takes a seat. Pitt likes to go inside out. Gray is a very good passer. Butler, conference rookie of the week, as we told you about. Top of the broadcast, in now for West Virginia. Great freshman off the bench for John Beeline's team. Young, that's a three. Oh, he's had a tough start. Young looking for his first points of the night. Benjamin running, wild left-handed shot. Levon Kendall over the back. That time, the Mountaineers were back, but nobody's taken the charge. In practice the other day, Coach Beeline thought that a charge should have been taken. He stopped practice, brought a manager out with this big pad, and reincarnated the move and knocked the guy silly. I, I said, you always do that? And the manager says, yeah, that's my job. If they don't draw the charge, I whack them. Levon Kendall takes a seat. That's key. He is so under underrated in uh, being that second big man for the Panthers. Tyrell Biggs comes in again. And off the bench for Jamie Dixon and the Panthers. You're taking the charge, huh, Coach? That's awfully big, and you've got to instill the toughness in your players, right? Oh, oh, yeah, and the manager was great. He, he really, he, he loved it. He said, yeah, if they don't take the charge, I whack them. <laughs> Darius Nichols handles. There's John Butler for Alexander. He was an incredible athlete. You saw him in the pregame warm tonight. Joe Alexander with some spectacular dunks. 
Mitchell's shot rattles out. Young the rebound, and Pittsburgh on the move again. Pitts playing good defense. West Virginia getting few good looks, but don't go away because the Mountaineers are relentless. They will keep taking that three, and chances are they will begin to hit them. But they do run hot and cold. Remember, this is a very young team. 71% of the offense that took them deep into the NCAA is gone. In the corner, it's Young. And off the pit bench, two field goals for Sam Young. That's a three-pointer. This quiet uh, kind of oxygen being sucked out of here right now between the pit defense and the cold shooting of the Mountaineers. Oh, what a rejection. Returned the sender. It was Young who just hit that two, not a three a moment ago. Here's Ramon in the corner, double team. Spectacular block there from Sam Young. Pittsburgh on a big run, but their fourth turnover, says Tim Higgins, and WVU gets it back, head-to-head -head with Jamie Dixon, who's had remarkable success in Pittsburgh as well. The game tonight. The sophomore forward for Pittsburgh from Clinton, Maryland, wears number 23 because of a guy named Michael Jordan, who knew how to jump a little bit, Bucky Waters, no doubt about that, and Young showing us some hops and some power as well here. Well, the number's right, but he's no Michael Jordan, but he's... He has shown us offense and defense, return to sender, and the fact that the Mountaineers are so cold, the Panthers are running. The transition game, long missed shots create transition. In the last five minutes and 45 seconds, West Virginia has had the ball seven times, no points. They are 0 for 6 on the floor, 0 for 3 from 3. This is over this five minute and 45 second span, but they can get just as hot just as quick. Sam Young, great job filling in for Levon Kendall out with the two fouls early for Pitt. He played gymnast in high school on his recruiting trip. Young actually performed some gymnastic moves, some backflips for the Pitt coaches when they went by the Gymnastics Athletic Center. How about that? They were hoping he would get the alumni to do the same thing, huh? <laughs> Butler has that snuffed away by Gray. Nice block by Aaron Gray. Does not have a rebound early, interestingly enough. This for Pittsburgh, but he makes a factor there on the defensive side. This crowd uh, is putting a lot of pressure on the Mountaineers. It's, uh, you know, it's like, what's happening, gang? The change in defense now with time to set up the 1-3-1, which West Virginia usually does after a score or a dead ball. They came back man. They had position, but whistle for the offensive foul on the push-up. They call that the swim stroke. And when you're seven feet and you make a stroke like that, people move. Amy Dixon, not happy with that call. Seven feet, 270 pounds. Aaron Gray. He was over 300 for a while there as a freshman in South Carolina. gets free. It's a triple off the bench for West Virginia. Did they ever need that puck? First points of the game for the Big East Rookie of the Week is Sean Butler out of Newark, New Jersey. Young, some contact, no call, little baseline runner. Gray flying in, wants a foul call, it's tip. No harm, no foul. Pitt has it again. You don't see that happen often. When Aaron Gray gets the ball, it's just virtually impossible to take it away from him. Averaging a double-double, 14 and a half points, over 10 rebounds a game, only player in the league to do that to this point. Young trying to keep up his great first half off the glass, not there. Gray way up high, had a hand on it. Alexander for Nichols, here come the Mountaineers. Who are? Way off. That was glass then rim on the three from the wing. You know, if you're a Pitt fan, you gotta be concerned. West Virginia absolutely can't score, and they're still hanging around. It's only a five-point game. Benjamin for Ronald Ramon. The junior, the second leading three-point shooter in the Big East Conference. He's been spectacular from three. Great to turn over. Ruoff read the passing lane well. Young trouble with a handle on Ramon. Has the loose change. Here comes Pitt. Young fields. Wow! Young will finish! Uh -huh. The alley and the oop were both spectacular. Pittsburgh running and running beautifully. Sam Young has a 35-inch vertical leap. We saw a lot of that right there, Bucky. Big-time stuff. Here's Butler on the other end. Short on a three, and Young has another rebound. 
Dave, he was so high he could hunt ducks with a rake. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard. Oh, wide open. Great. Three easy two. What a big throw. LeVance Fields just doesn't, he just waits for the right opening. He doesn't force. What a player. Alexander trying to answer. Cannot Ramon on the rebound. It is all pit here. West Virginia needs to slow down a little bit. Work for a better shot. They've fallen in love with the three, and they haven't gone inside out at all. Pitt hasn't had to work on defense. It's Chuck and Duck. Ron Beeline telling us this is his most athletic team, but the athleticism has come from Pitt. Watch this play up high, up. Sam Young. Oh, that was Michael Jordan. I swear it was. Number 23. Yes, perfect pass. Oh my. That's why they were picked first in the Big East. That's why they are sixth in one pole, seventh in another. A veteran team, well coached, and have won on the road. What, they got four straight on the road? They're yeah. undefeated. And Big East play on the road away from Pittsburgh. That's not easy. Here are the updated standings for you. Pittsburgh the first, along with Marquette, a seven game win streak for Tom Crane's team. The 20 wins in league play this year. Georgetown has just been great with five game win streak for Coach Thompson in West Virginia. 18 and four, despite the fact four starters from last year's Sweet 16 team gone. That's big personnel changes here in Morgantown. It's, uh, it's like John Beeline's daycare center, <laughs> but they can play 18 wins. Ramon, lots of trouble there. And Nichols makes a steal. Give West Virginia's defense some credit. It's keeping them in the game. An intense defense from Nichols causing the turnover. Alexander for Young. Mountaineers only three for 15 from the floor, only one for nine from their beloved bonus sphere. They to live out there. Only triple the game bucket from Deshaun Butler. That's got to change. Shot clock under 10. Whistle stops play. Says Tim Higgins a foul against Pittsburgh. Well, you know, I said they better slow down and work for a better shot, but maybe they're overdoing it. Maybe I'm overcoaching from over here. West Virginia has been spectacular at home. And they're undefeated. And at 5 0 in league play, 11 0 overall. Wild shot Nichols. Alexander able to get the weak side rebound for West Virginia. And the shot clock continues to tick, though. That ball did not hit rim. Ruah, from long range. A jump start for the Mountaineer Maniacs. They're right behind us. No, no chance will not off. And you can see a bottom of your screen jumping around here. Three-point number is not good at all for West Virginia. Ruoff trying to change that. The sophomore from Spring Hill, Florida, near Tampa St. Pete. Nice cut. Good feed. Cook before the shot. Some contact. What's happening here is Pitt is able to get inside. They're not taking any threes. They're just being patient, dribble penetration, good passing, and they're getting that ball right down underneath. I, I'm just I'm just amazed the Mountaineers are, are, are only down by six because Pitt has dominated every phase of play. Deshaun Butler Bucky picks up his first foul for West Virginia. Our personnel changes. Young down low to kick out. Field back in the game is fouled before the shot. Ruoff picks it up. And Alex, the sophomore guard, is shot. <laughs> that can't be me. I, I can't even know can assist right now. Fields. Levance Fields. They call him the general. And he is just an exceptional, you talk about tough city guards. Well, look it up in the dictionary. And there he is, Levance Fields. 89 minutes over the last three games in the Big East competition. Only three turnovers while averaging 15 points a game. Just amazing. And, and he never seems to lose his cool. And you better not blink if you're out there with him because the ball will be right to you if you're open. First two of the game for the sophomore from Brooklyn. One of 17 finals for the Kuzi Award given out to the nation's top point guard. And you have to give him Bucky serious consideration. He's been great this year. Well, a lot of that goes with how well your team does, too, and his team isn't letting him down. Ted Talkington in the game for the first time for WVU. He's a walk-on. 
from right here in the state of West Virginia. Because of some injury issues and other players ahead of him on the rotation and the bench until now, he's getting some playing time tonight. Butler is fouled. It was clear to me that time, though, Dave, that West Virginia tried to get better spacing, taking their time, dribble penetration. Pittsburgh again control, but WVU is right in this game still. 18-10. Sophomore guard, LeVance Fields, has been spectacular already, Bucky Waters. He's the all-time leader in pit history. Assist to turnover ratio, he can dish the rock. He really sets the table. He can go fast, he can go slow, but he puts the ball right where it needs to be and makes you look good. He's the third in the transition. Brandon Knight, who was on the bench here tonight with Pitt as, a, as the video coordinator, started this move. And then, of course, Carl Krauser was, uh, was the uh, attacker as a point guard over his career. And Levance Fields is really kind of a combination of both. Brandon Knight was going to transfer uh, when, uh, when the coaching changed. Maybe there's a good shot of him. He now is athletic career really in jeopardy he's had a lot of serious injuries but uh, boy he and ben hallen he bought into the ben hallen theory and everybody followed him they called him the leader and sean butler a great freshman for west virginia try to keep them going here tonight has another free throw he's the program assistant the video coordinator when the night is Two years ago, playing with the Houston Rockets after a great NBDL career where he won a couple titles. On one play, Bucky broke his leg towards ACL. 16 months of rehab for Brandon Knight, and he never really fully recovered. No, and uh, that's, you know, people talk about college players leaving early, and how can they do that? Where is their loyalty? Well, those injuries happen. And if they happen before you sign a contract, then you're, you know, just a kid looking to get into grad school or something. So there's something to be said for taking the money. Check in the stat track, bottom of your screen. Brandon Knight, what a career. Two Big East regular season titles, couple of sweet 16 for Ben Howland. Cooking the baseline, not there. Good defense. That's Rob Summers. Ralph Willard recruited Brandon Knight, and he was going to change. And his uh, dad wouldn't let him. Made him stick with his commitment to Pitt. Ted and Thompson. hindsight, what a good decision that was sure for was. Pitt <laughs> and Brandon McMahon. Talking to the walk-on with a miss for WVU. Fields for Gray, there's a double team. Someone's got to be open. Graves with the left. Antonio Graves, great reverse layup. He's got six. We spoke with him after the practice shoot around this morning for Pittsburgh. Very enthusiastic, all smiles about this matchup. He said, hey, we know the fans are going to be against us, and we love that. We feed off of that. West Virginia offense still has yet to score with their 20 possessions. Every time they score, it comes off a, a, a pit turnover, which is the not going to come too frequently, as we've mentioned. They take care of the ball pretty well. Shot clock under 10. Summers, the transfer from Penn State. Here's Young, long range shot. He's not. Fields a hand on it, collides with Young. Pittsburgh has got it. Dave wants it. The football coach of Pitt, Rich Rodriguez, his counterpart at WV, might want to recruit those two guys. That was a big-time collision that, there. That was about eight on the Richter scale. <laughs> In the open floor. These two teams do play football, you know, oh, the in the are. Big East. Big East 5-0 and in bowl games this year. Wow. Marvelous record. Conference proud of that. And put eight teams in the NCAA tournament. Here's Greg from Gray. Oh. Double team still finds it off the glass. Is he strong or what? Six in the game. Preseason Big East player of the year. Largest lead of the game here for Pittsburgh. It's 10. Love their defense. The Panthers don't change up much. They've really given the perimeter a lot of a challenge. And so far, the Mountaineers have been unable to penetrate. Time out for John B. Line. The Mountaineers have 18 to shoot here. Very concerned, talking to us about this game, said, look, Pitt's got sort of that dream team. They have one focus, <laughs> and it's on winning games. He was really impressed with the team concept for Pittsburgh. It's not one guy like Aaron Gray scoring 20, 25 a night. Unselfish basketball for Pittsburgh has made them so successful, and Coach Beeline was worried about that. Yeah, and 
But he, he has a tendency to make every team he plays, you know, a dream team and underplays his skinny kids, you know, from the mountain. But fact of the matter is, they're looking for the third straight NCAA. And I'll admit, this is a new young team. And, and to say that a daycare center that he's running over there has overachieved would not be a stretch. Offensive struggles for John Beeline. 95 wins in five years here. He said before the game he was concerned about the adjustments they'd have to make against a versatile team like Pittsburgh. Small get outside, long range. Three for the seven footer. So one seven footer and Gray boxes out small again. I, Dave, I don't think that's a play John Beeline put in uh, when he called that timeout. Kick out for Fields. Graves. They really passed the ball well. Jamie Dixon told us that this morning, so impressed with his unselfish play and the passing like that. We'll have free up. Mike Cook down low, have some free throws. John Beeline's team is showing its youth defensively as well. Uh, Pitt is just really passing the ball almost at will. And again, not taking any threes or very many. They're just going right down in the paint and hurting them. Cook has another free throw fouls on Wellington Smith, his first. Mike Cook, a junior from Philadelphia. He's a transfer from East Carolina. His career best came at ECU against South Carolina, scored 24 back in 2004. Lots of changes for each coach here. Yeah, Cook averaged 15 his last year at East Carolina. That's a circuitous route from Philadelphia to Greenville, North Carolina to Pittsburgh, but it, it's turned out well. Pitt loves them. Yeah, started all 24 games. Average more than 10 a game. Here's Mike Cook from Philly. Under five to go in our first half here. And raucous WVU crowd really unable to explode tonight. They've got Butler lost the hand. Graves has a steal. That's a forced turnover. Graves in the corner. Been red hot so far, short on that three. Nichols, good box out, nice position on the defensive glass. Ruach was running small, they never saw it coming. Cook ahead of the pack. Has to. I want to tell you something. You play against this pit defense, it's it's a deep muscle massage. It's you go to a blender when you cut through that defense. I mean they got the hands on you and they control you. And this young Mountaineer team is really struggling trying to attack it. That was a pass that never should have been thrown. Gray is seven feet tall and he threw it right to him. I think they're pressing. This young Mountaineer team is pressing and John Beeline's trying to get him. To, to just calm down and do what they do well, which is move the ball and take the three. How about Jamie Dixon, fourth year head coach at Pittsburgh, the first ever coach in school history to win 20 games four straight years. Look at the win percentage as part of our Hyundai Big East leaders. What a start in Western PA for Jamie Dixon. Well, it's his eighth year at Pitt. Uh, four, he was under uh, Ben Howland who got credit for making Pitt, you know, a front uh, a front row team in the NCAA. But then there was a question, could Jamie sustain it? He's answered that question. Oh, by the way, Saturday in Morgantown, Ben Howland brings UCLA back here, rated number two in the country. You know, I, I said to Jamie today, I said, I, you know, I think he missed that drive down to Morgantown. <laughs> so much. You know, after four, he just missed it so much that he wanted to come 3,000 miles and do it again. Actually, the Mountaineers really put it on them out in Pauley last year. As we talked about, there's that number with Jamie Dixon, the 2004 Big East Coach of the Year. Lost in the Big East Finals in 04, his first year. First round to Pacific in 05, they lost in the NCAAs. And last year, the round of 32 to Bradley. After making the Big East Final, a loss to Syracuse in that last game at MSG in New York. This is their 26th possession, the Mountaineers. Only four field goals. Five turnovers, only two paint points. Beeline, settle them down. He big, will. And the big key, Bucky, is the crowd is not in the no, game. They just no. haven't been involved. No. Alexander. Oh. That's That'll the way get to him. get him going. Oh, ho, ho. Alexander launches and lands for two big ones. Again, 
with the usual opportunity after a score to set up that 1-3-1. They're back man for man. They're trying to cut off that inside game, maybe force Pitt into some outside shooting. Field slowly in command. Graves in the corner. Kendall, the shot clock under 10. Now at five. Field just launches. Ball is tipped by Alexander. Partially blocked. Here come the Mountaineers. Nichols got Young on the right wing. And he likes to slow things up, set up the half court offense for the Mountaineers. You don't see uh, Levance Field struggle like that to get a shot off very often. That dunk put some juice in the Mountaineer defense as well. Long range shot. Young misfires. Levon Kendall. That's a very good piano player. Boy, he's a good home. contender, I know. <laughs> and a great musician, too, plays the drums. His father was a touring musician when he was growing up in Canada. Played on the senior and junior Canadian national team the last several years. When you're 6'10, you got to buy him a grand piano. <laughs> That's right. None of those keyboards. Shot clock out of 10 again. Patient put off. That's disastrous last time, though, because Chris couldn't watch a shot in time. And a uh, turnover. So, very effective half court defense for West Virginia. And Alexander soaring. And we mean he can really jump. Look out below. Flush. It's just. Recent home cooking for WVU here at the Coliseum. And let's say John's by 28, Noble by 23, UConn by 19, South Florida by 15. But tonight, different story. ESPN National Golf Challenge coming your way. Golf fans and club pros not too early to start thinking about the 07 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com. Place for your team or sign your course up as a qualifying site. Be part of the search for America's best twosome. Check it out. They really, they really invited me to that, but I, I was having... I was having my ball retriever re-gripped. <laughs> that is a critical club in the bag. Yeah, I forgot to have that ready. It is. Butler. That's three. It's in the good book, Dave, and a child shall lead them. The freshman. Coming off the bench, averaging 10 a game, and he's been hot. I'm impressed with West Virginia Bucket. They've been really thoroughly outplayed in this game. Almost every aspect that they are alive because of points off turnovers a big key. The Alexander dunk. And that play has gotten this crowd back in it. What a nice strip. Down low as he works hard defensively against Mike Cook. Fields, is, get shoot here. Okay, they, Fields is getting the rest because that turnover right before the last timeout, timeout was only his fourth turnover in 103 minutes. Look at the move on the baseline. Sam Young continues a great first half. Eight points for him off the bench. That leaves all hit scores. Still just 10. And with the Mountaineers' propensity for nailing threes and getting hot, they're still very much in this basketball game. We're off for Butler, a minute 15 and counting to go on our fading first half clock here for Morgantown. Butler the drive, kick out for Young. Alexander, short on three, Gray. Seven feet tall, able to grab that rebound easily. And he was out guarding at the head of the key just a minute ago. Sometimes West Virginia will be five around like Pitsnoggle. Young steps to the baseline, turnover gives the ball back to WVU. Kevin Pitsnoggle now playing in the CBA up in Pittsburgh. Coming up at halftime. Big East Conference Wire, player and rookie of the week. We'll tell you about that. Butler, the rookie of the week from WVU. Oppenheimer coaches spotlight with John Beeline. First half highlights and stats as well. It's on the way from Morgantown. Alexander slips. But it was knocked out of bounds by Young. 24 to shoot here for the Mountaineers. The, uh, the evolution of Joe Alexander is very much like Aaron Gray. Came from nowhere. As we said, did not play as a freshman, did not play against Pitt last year. And now as a sophomore, is one of the more dominant players starting every game. Defensive effort, Buck, he's such a key. Great effort there from Young, just in the inbounds play with a 35-inch vertical leap. He almost intercepted that pass. This is, shoot. this is important to West Virginia to finish on a high. Butler fade away from the free throw line. And Young up high for another rebound. He has been very impressive in this first half of Pittsburgh. 
Ronald Ramon, another Brooklyn guard, now in charge of the Panther offense. Ten seconds to go here. Shot clock turned on. Ramon on Nichols. Graves drives. Can't hit. Alexander the rock. The shot comes after the buzzer, after the musket <laughs> from the Mountaineer mascot. Oh. <laughs> WVU a season low. First half points. Only able to muster 17. And they trail by 10. To the first place, Pitt Panthers, their arch rival. It's the backyard wrong. Well, coming up on Geico Sports Night, the struggling Nets try to end their four game losing. Back here at the WVU Coliseum, Morgantown, West Virginia. We are at halftime with the 172nd edition of the Backyard Brawl, Pitt and West Virginia. Let's check in with the Big East Conference Wire and tell you all about South Florida's McHugh Mattis. He is the Big East Conference Player of the Week for good reason. How about the win over then 19th ranked Notre Dame, 69-63. Mattis had a career day, 23 points and a career best 16 rebounds against the Irish at the Joy Center in South Bend for the year. He's leading the Bulls, 13 points a game, a team high, 7.3 boards a game as well. South Florida getting 57.4% for the floor from McHugh Mattis. The senior for the Bulls, a huge effort against Notre Dame, not only scoring, but blocking shots. Leaves a conference bucky in that category as well. Mattis really spectacular in the upset win over Notre Dame. Deshaun Butler is the rookie of the week. And in New Jersey, the New Jersey native left him saying the Butler did it. Number one for the Mountaineers, a 6'7 freshman from Newark. Had a fabulous week and he took it out on his neighbors. The guy is versatile and a poster boy for this young Mountaineer team that is surprising many. Shot nearly 61% for the floor in those two games. A sweep of Jersey over Rutgers and Seton Hall. When we come back to the WVU Coliseum, more of halftime. It's the Backyard Brawl, a great part of Rivalry Week 2007. Welcome back to the latest edition of the Backyard Brawl. Pitt, West Virginia from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. It is halftime. Tonight's Big East Coaches Spotlight brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. Let's take a closer look at John Beeline of West Virginia. And Bucky, what he's done, nothing short of amazing fifth year here at West Virginia. His first year, no postseason, but in 04, third round of the NIT. 05, 24 wins, the Elite Eight, and last year, the Sweet 16. Well, no one said he could take this team deep into the NCAA, but you know what? The Mountaineers are right there. They're like 26th in the country right now. The man is amazing. He's no secret. I thought when Patrick, his son, graduated last year that one of those big, 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 big-time schools would pick him off. But he likes Morgantown. He's still here, and the Mountaineer fans are loving it. Native of Western New York, got his career started at Erie Community College. He's always been a head coach, never an assistant. Done a great job here in Morgantown. We're halftime. The WVU Coliseum, Pitt, and the Mountaineers. Those WVU fans hope that little baby will enjoy many backyard brawls. The first of many, but can't be happy with the score, right? WVU down by 10. Day run. Bucky Waters at the break. Pittsburgh, six different players score for the Mountaineers, just three. And WVU shoots only 24% from the floor in the first 20 minutes. Things have got to change for the Mountaineers here at home. Well, they've lost four games this year, and in each one, they've shot less than 30% from three. Tonight, they're shooting 18. This team can go hot and cold, as young teams are one to do, but don't think they're going to stop shooting. That's what they do, and I think they'll do it well in the second half. Well, Pittsburgh, the nine-day layoff for their head coach, Jamie Dixon. No problem, right? Looking pretty good in the first half. Let's check in with the highlights, Bucky. Well, they sure had the good legs. The defense was splendid. There's LeVance Field just controlling everything. Antonio Graves with the finish. And here's Fields again, pushing the ball up the floor. And the alley! Oh! 23, Sam Young, the sophomore from Clinton, Maryland. Watch here, boom, reject, return to center, and the Panthers are running again. He was just absolutely eely and powerful in the first half. He didn't always need Fields. And here's Joe Alexander. This is one that put the juice in the crowd. A great athlete with a great dunk. And as I said, the freshmen so lead them. Deshaun Butler with eight points off the bench was the leading scorer for the Mountaineers. 
Big number is certainly field goal shooting for Pittsburgh. Each team averaging about 73 points a game coming in. Points in the paint. Now Aaron Gray did not have a huge first half. Six points for Pitt, but one of several guys on the score. But we're talking about six for Pittsburgh. Good balance for the Panthers tonight. Yeah, and, mo and the balance, I think, too, uh, Dan came because they get, got the ball down inside. They weren't rushing. They certainly didn't force any threes. They were very confident that they could maneuver and penetrate the young Mountaineer defense, and they did. Pittsburgh has won 20 games for a sixth straight year. That is a school record, and tonight they show us exactly why. 10-point lead, a difficult place to play. The WVU Coliseum. Recent game for West Virginia against Rutgers on the road. They shot 65.2% from the field. The best since entering the Big East back in 1991. They'll need that kind of second half here, Bucky's. We update Star Watch to overtake the powerful Panthers. Well, both did their thing. I thought uh, I thought Deshaun Butler was sensational off the bench in just 13 minutes with eight points, but LeVance Fields does it. He kills you softly. He only took one shot and uh, just absolutely orchestrated beautifully so that Pittsburgh played the first half in the paint. Big game, Bucky, for Sam Young off the bench for Pitt. How about that? Butler eight points also off the bench. Big East Rookie of the Week underway. To you and the home light grays here. Young right off the hop to begin play. Second half had that three go all the way down and pop out. Tough break for West Virginia. He's still scoreless tonight. He holds the penetration. There's Gray for two. Boy, this is getting to be a pattern. West Virginia misses a three and Pitt gets a three foot shot. Jamie Smogan at seven feet starts the second half here for West Virginia. He's got a matchup with Gray. That's no easy matter. A lot of contact. And a nice cut there by Young trying to get going. Scoreless, as we mentioned. And the foul, if it's on Levon Kendall, will be his third. Yeah, Levon Kendall always plays such great. Oh, this is the pass inside to Aaron Gray. At the other end, uh, unfortunately for Pitt, here's the foul. Well, we're still with Gray. I'm sorry. The big fella is there with the soft paws. You get it to him. Nobody is going to take it away from him. Kendall leaves the game with the three fouls we talked about. And right back in, Sam Young, so spectacular in the first half. Kendall normally just a very smart player defensively. He positions well. They miss him. They will miss him defensively. It's still a 10-point game with 19, over 19 minutes to go, and an explosive Mountaineer offense that's right now snoozing. First two of the game for Frank Young, the senior from Tallahassee, Florida. Smaller than at seven feet, got up and a piece of that. And Ruoff kicked out of bounds. And that's Fields right in front of us, helping out Tim Higgins with the call there. We praised both of these teams for their assist turnover ratio and the fact they led the country. Pitt number one, West Virginia number two. And at the half, both had more turnovers than assists. A very strange game, but happens in rivalry. Nice trap, West Virginia on the move. Alexander caught that tip pass. And was bumped. Antonio Graves got a piece of him. Graves had a nice first half with six points. That was Second good, foul for Graves. Yeah, that was a good foul. That was going to be another dunk. Good way to make sure the crowd doesn't get in the game because Alexander can get him up as we saw yeah. that huge stuff in the first half. It's exciting. Big key for me is Young getting going. He's the team's leading scorer. One of the top three-point shooters in the Big East. Leads in... Several categories from behind the arc. Alexander from 15, can't find the range. Another rebound for Sam Young. Right now, West Virginia is getting the good looks, and they're going to start to drop. Graves is quick. Double team kick out for Fields. And sophomore from the Big Apple runs the show here so well for Pitt. Brandon Knight, Carl Krauser, and now LeVance Field. Pitt has been blessed with great point guard leadership. Young, under 10 to shoot, hits from the right wing. Sam Young has 10 to double his per game average off the bench for Pitt. That's called depth. No leave on Kendall, no problem. Super sub tonight. He lost some trouble with a pass there, and Alexander's gonna get whistled for the foul. Contact with Young, and Joe Alexander gets nailed with the personal. The Big East scores to tell you about 
tonight. Georgetown trying to win a sixth straight game. On the road to Louisville. Freedom Hall against Rick Pitino's team. They've been hot. Oh, that wow. St. John's USF game's at Carnesecca Arena in Jamaica, Queens on the St. John's campus. I think uh, St. John's may be playing more games there. Marquette over Rutgers. No surprise there. Marquette has won seven in a row. Foul call. Rutgers one and four in their last five. Now, talking about this stretch for the Mountaineers, UCLA comes in here Saturday, number two in the country. Monday, they go to Georgetown. That's like three top 25 teams in, what, six days? The gauntlet. Welcome to the Big East. Oof. Travel call on Graves there. Turnover gives WVU the ball back. Turnover numbers. And for the season, we told you how well each control the ball and take not, care of it. Yeah, not one, two in the Big East, in the country. Wow. Got some palming call against Nichols. We've seen a lot of that emphasized by the officials this year. John Beeline, irate. Don't, yeah, don't see that very often. This is the old schoolyard turnover here. And they're, they made it a point to call this year if it puts the defense at a disadvantage. How can it not? I mean, it's like having Velcro in your hand. Makes it very tough to defend. Good ball handling Graves. Cook in the corner. Can hit Greg, the rebound. Powerfully up he goes, and Smalligan gets a piece of Aaron Graves. Free throws coming with a big fella for Pitt. He likes that little baby hook over his left shoulder, but the one thing I really like about Aaron Gray is he keeps the ball high. He doesn't bring it down and let the little people in the game. If they're going to try to take it from him or defend him, they're going to have to go up and get him. There's 61% free throw shooter. Has another one. And his offseason at Pittsburgh as he misses two. Went to Philadelphia every day. Not far from Allentown. And the 76ers facility play pickup games at Allen Iverson. A lot of NBA guys, Temple Noble players to bring his game up. Young, long range. That's three. And a big one for Frank Young, his first field goal tonight. And the crowd involved. Only a nine point deficit. That's nothing for the long range Mountaineers. Cook penetrates. Haynes waved it off. Offensive foul. Against Mike Cook. Darius Nichols, he took that charge, and uh, he's feeling it. That, uh, that's, uh, that's one injury Hallmark doesn't make a card for. <laughs> <laughs> Butler's into the game here. You talked about the first half, Pucky, that practice drill with the dummy, right? Yeah. And the student manager take that shot. Young's feeling it now. He's getting hot. Two straight field goals for the team's leading score. And Pitt says, hang on a second. 7-2 WVU run thanks largely in part to Frank Young. He's getting hot. Good game. Big play, their best start in school history in the Big East. And it's tested tonight here for the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. Six-ranked Panthers trying to win against West Virginia. Dave Ryan, Bucky Waters, our entire crew. Tonight's game being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. Sam Young in a one-man comeback. Seven points in the last three minutes and 10 seconds. And Jamie Dixon said, hold it. Hold it. We got to slow this thing down. Lone returning starter from last year's Sweet 16 team for West Virginia, the senior from Tallahassee, Florida. One of two seniors on the roster bucket. This is a very young WB team. Young had no points for the first 20 minutes and 36 seconds. He just got in the mood. Sam Young on the other end for Pittsburgh tries to make it happen. And Sean Butler, the spectacular freshman for the Mountaineers commits the foul. Just knew West Virginia had a run or two in it tonight. Home crowd, huge rivalry. And the fact that Pittsburgh is perched atop the Big East Conference standings. Great play on the inbounds. 
Well, West Virginia worked against that uh, yesterday, but uh, Pitt is a senior-laden veteran team, and even the sophomores play like they've been out there forever. Very savvy. Each young Bucky playing well here. Sam, another deuce on the inbounds play. Alexander. 15 to shoot, calls a play, top of the key here for WVU. And he's got Iron Gray out there with him. Roth misfires on a three. And Pitt gets it back. A lot of time out on the floor. Pittsburgh and head coach Jamie Dixon. Nine point lead on the road, a dangerous West Virginia. of the WVU Pitt rivalry. February 1982, big crowd on hand. The last year of the Eastern 8, which became the Atlantic 10, Bucky in 82-83. Lester Rowe, then a freshman for West Virginia, got it going for the Mountaineers. Notice the difference in the uniforms. Must have been tough times. They didn't have much material. 82-77 oh. was a final in front of the largest crowd ever here at the WVU Coliseum. 16,700 and change. Now, many would say this is the house that Bucky built. You're the former head coach here. You never coached here, though. You were here in the 60s and brought WVU to an NCAA tournament. Well, you're, you're right, Dave. It, it, they built it. It was a war, and uh, we were able to get it approved, and then I went back to Duke as head coach. But uh, it, was, it was very contested. They called it Bucky's Palace. Why do we need this great big coliseum when we have other academic needs? But fortunately, we got it. Look at Young on a great feed from Mike Cook. Sam Young has come to play off the bench for Pitt tonight. The last game, Dave, wow. he played 15 minutes and didn't score. Tonight he's played the 19 minutes and he has 14 points. Whoa. Points in the paint, huge advantage for Pitt. And again, the crowd which as we saw in that flashback to 1932 can really be a factor here. It's a loud building. And the hometown Mountaineers are doing well. Three to shoot, Alexander, a lot of trouble. Forces it, raises the twine. Gray didn't touch it. And Pitt gets the ball back. Boy, really showing, really showing their youth not getting good shots. Look at the poise, look at the poise. Finally, somebody gets open in a good double team, and oh yeah, it is his night. Look at this, just, just no, no, no panic by Cook. What? Oh, the shadow's on the line, but I don't know if the sneaker is. No. In any event, the zebra didn't <laughs> think so. Awfully close. Put cashed in. Graves outside the arc. WVU needs to turn the tide in a hurry here. This sort of feel that Pitt is ready to. Put the final clamp on the Mountaineers. Ramon's not scored. Second leading three-point shooter in the conference. Here's Benjamin. Long-range shot rattles out. Young, spectacular rebound. Another two for Sam Young, who continues a brilliant night. He's up to 16 points. And he has a cramp. He's not used to all this action. If you've had one, it's not funny. It's very painful. Enjoying what could be a career night as trainers take a look at the left calf cramp of Sam Young. His Boy. career best 18 against Dayton earlier and, this year. And he, he came from Mount Lebanon to get that one too. And here, Benjamin rounding out. That was a human flying from left to right there. Boy, he is Jordan-esque tonight with the hops and everything. You know, going back to this arena, my first year here, I was 29-year-old head coach, and we played Duke, and we played Carolina, we beat them, but we played UCLA out there. They had a guy at playing center named Al Cinder. Now, I often wonder what happened to him, because I thought he was pretty darn good. Now, he became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but the point of this was, UCLA was supposed to come back here and open this Coliseum. Never happened. Bucking coach here, folks, 65 to 69. Took him to the NCAA in 1967. Pretty good year. Advanced Auto Parts. Look at the upcoming games brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. As we told you, WVU hosting UCLA, second-ranked Ben Howland's team. First time in school history, they will host back-to-back -to -back top-ten teams. Not bad. Butler. Spins and scores. Nice one for the freshman. A fearless freshman. Watch Pitt patience. 
28 of the 37 points have been in the paint. They're just not going to be hurried into anything quick. Kendall with three fouls. Drives in, make it four fouls. Offensive charge called on Levon Kendall, who just came back into the game and will probably quickly be considered a Tim Higgins. Take a seat. Yeah, takes a basket away, too, which uh, Jamie, Jamie Dixon was begging for. Didn't happen. What is a good move? That was good defense. The weak side got in there, and so the manager don't, wouldn't whack him tomorrow. He took the charge. Kendall out with four personals. And Aaron Gray had a very brief rest. Back on the hard with the pit. Alexander cut free throw line jumper short. Small going to hand on the rebound. The Butler transfer couldn't bring it in. Benjamin for Fields. Here comes Pitt. Only 11 points in almost 13 minutes. Young looking for that career high. He's tied it. Sam Young, 18 on the night, ties a career high set against Dayton earlier this season for Pittsburgh. Off the pitch. <laughs> How about this guy? Must, Coming into this one only must, he had, he must, double figure seven times. Must, hard to be, believe. must be a full moon in Transylvania or someplace. <laughs> I, the guy is hot. He is. Alexander top of the key, 50 to shoot for WVU. Small get out of hand on it. Oh, good defense along with Ronald Ramon. Ooh, Gray was fortunate at that time. He kind of reached around. You usually don't get a break on those. But Morgan didn't come to meet it either. Fields. Three ball too strong. Push off will be called. Looks like. On Pittsburgh, Keith Benjamin, the guilty party. West Virginia 11-0 at home this year, 24-2 over the last two years, and you watch them tonight and you wonder how they did that. They just have not gotten off the, off the snide here. Beeline, pacing, pleading. The team hasn't responded. This team scored 89 points in a game last week against Lucky. Shot 65% from the field. Alexander, pretty move, but he can't finish. Does not get the roll on the baseline. Fields the other way in transition. Ramon, not caught loose for the threes yet tonight. Handling the ball well, playing good defense. That is a perfect example, Bucky, of how Pitt can beat you. Ramon known for the three-point shooting, but he's doing other things tonight. Well, they really are a dream team in that regard. They just play so united and focused. They don't care who scores. That, Bucky, is a mismatch. Gray on Smolligan, who's a seven-footer and plays a perimeter game usually for West Virginia, getting swallowed up by Eric Gray down low, who is going to be a first-round draft pick, folks, in the NBA this year. Biggest lead of the game for Pitt, it's 15. Before a national TV broadcast of the 05-06 season, Sam Young, the sophomore for Pitt, performed for the cameras a gymnastics routine, which we're told was spectacular. He's been great tonight off the bench for Pittsburgh, part of our Pontiac game-changing performance. Matching career high, Bucky. Well, it's certainly been outstanding. Pitt defensively has been terrific, but he has just been the man against a tenacious Mountaineer defense. He's just taken over. Little flip shots, anything he wants. What a night. <laughs> I want to see the gymnastic stuff. I'm pretty intrigued. Well, tonight he did it, but with a basketball. That's correct. That's hard. Pitt's last three opponents have shot under 40%, and they have really done a number on the Mountaineers. Right now, the Mountaineers are shooting 27%. And that will make Coach Beeline's hair turn gray or worse. Little rebound on the Big East Gray. And not complete the three-point play. Put in a 10-2 run. Gray shooting at only 61% from the line coming into this game has not been very effective. His uncle played for Duke uh, back in the uh, 80s for Bill Foster. Got some hoop jeans in there. That's right. Butler in the corner. Young watches him closely. And a 20 to shoot for West Virginia. Ruoff has really been held in check. Butler in the corner. Three ball short. Ramon. Battling for the rebound. Oh, able to bring it down. Pitt is scrapping. I'll tell you what, the Pitt Medical Center better look into this game because this, uh, this Pittsburgh team has given about 14,000 people lockjaw. 
What a performance. <laughs> 26 points in 10 minutes to go. Overflow student section. Nothing to say. That's a reason. Dre, another play down low. A men among boys here. Type example for Pittsburgh and specifically Aaron Gray. Textbook center play. Under control, even though the weak side defense, Darius Nichols, came and tried to get underfoot. The big fella had the poise. Right now, though, fouling Gray is a turnover. Cannot complete a three-point play for a second straight time down the floor. Butler rattles out another three. Alexander tipped the rebound from the hands of Sam Young, but Keith Benjamin has got it for Pitt. And coming to you from the WVU Coliseum, sold out tonight. Pittsburgh and West Virginia, 172nd meeting. Backyard brawl. Pitt and WVU, great rivals. Dave Bucky, our entire crew with you. From the WVU campus on the banks of the Monongahela River. The Mighty Mon. It flows north. That's right. <laughs> right toward Pittsburgh. You learn those things <laughs> when you play here. So Nichols, Nichols with a nice move. Darius, who averaged 10 a game. Bucky coming in, first deuce of the night for him. Well, Pittsburgh is demonstrating why they were projected to be the top team in the conference this year. A splendid performance at both ends of the floor. Meticulous offensively. Uh, West Virginia has played a 2-3 match, the 1-3-1 zone that has given so many teams problems, and a good man for man. And look at that. They have just, it's been an autopsy. They just won't do anything till they get it down inside, and they deliver. Darius Nichols third in the Big East in free throw shooting. The junior from Radford, Virginia near Roanoke has a three-point play. But unfortunately for he and West Virginia, first three points of the night. Fields kicks over to Ramon. There is a three we were telling about. Lala Ramon can launch, folks, from long range. And he has his first triple. But he was patient, didn't force it. That's great, a great, great point. Yeah, great That's attitude great on this team. Point. Great attitude. Do not force shots this team. Very good looks, high percentage shots. Man, really well coached. Alexander is hit in the way up by Ramon. And yeah, finally a three-pointer for Pittsburgh. First of the night for them. It's shocking. Ronald Ramon put a Bronx All Hollows <laughs> foul on him. Couple here for Alexander. Sophomore from Mount Airy, Maryland, about 30 minutes northwest of Baltimore. He'll have another free throw, just five points on the night for him. He started all 23 games. WVU, Joe's actually born overseas in Taiwan. Spent two years there, five in Beijing, China, and a year in Hong Kong. His parents in Business International. Good student, too, Joe Alexander, member of the Big East Academic Honor Roll. West Virginia in that 1-3-1, one, one, trying to do some trapping and get some transition baskets. And, uh, and Jamie Dixon says, whoa, guys, whoa. You've been great and poised so far. Don't let them hurry into anything. Attention, golf fans and club pros. We know this part of the country, northeast, it's ice and snow. But let's talk about golf anyway, right? It's not that long off. Not too early to start thinking about the 07 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com, register your team, or sign your course up at a qualifying site. Be part of the search for America's best twosome. There is one good thing about playing golf in this kind of weather. I am fearless on the water holes. <laughs> if I'm short, <laughs> it's frozen. It rolls. <laughs> that is a great point. i got to try that. That'll help my uh, approach to the green a lot. Georgetown, Louisville, and that has gone final. How about the Hoyas? Six straight wins. They are now 7-2 in conference play. Jeff Green, great player for a member of the Big East Honor Roll this week. And they await uh, these Mountaineers on Monday night in Washington after the Mountaineers entertain UCLA number two UCLA Bruins here on Saturday. So Marquette in action too. Marquette looking to extend on a seven-game win streak, second place behind Pitt in the Big East. Five to shoot. Cook on the wing. Back high and great hand on the rebound. Here's Alexander. Alex Ruach thought about three. Alexander open. Passes instead. Butler reverse. Layout. Boy, it's a good thing he went and under and used that rim because Aaron Gray was just about to take his head off. 
Great move by the rookie. Freshman from Newark, New Jersey, Bloomfield Tech High School. Digs the kick out. Ramon him again. Buries another three with defenders in his face. Second straight. Three ball, Ronald Ramon. Great performance by the Panthers. Just like that. Quiet the pin. Yep. I mean, there's got to be a vaccine that's this effective. That's good by Alexander, but he can't finish. That kind of that kind of typifies the night for the Mountaineers. Great move, great first step, right at the rim, couldn't get it to go. Well, he's so disappointed to miss that shot too. Kip, long three is long, and the student section about 3,500 strong to let him know. Ruoff, another layup miss for the Mounties. The second straight, John Beeline losing it on the WVU sideline. Mike Cook had a wide open 18-footer and he shot at 21. <laughs> That's good defense. There's posted up on the feed from Fields, but too far even for the reach of Aaron Gray with that amazing wingspan seven-footer. Still a big lead for Pitt on the road, 16 points. To live life to its fullest, to take charge, have fun, grab a little gusto, and live in the moment. They all tuned in again just to see me kick your... WWE Raw, Mondays at 9 on USA. Characters welcome. Brought to you locally by K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. For the store nearest you, call 1-800-GO-SHOP-KG. Hard to imagine WVU 22 and 6. The home games played against Pitt in this great rivalry. That is changing tonight. Let's take a look at our Red Lobster. Nothing but net shot of the game. And Bucket's got to do is Sam Young off the pit bench. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the highlight of the first half. The alley oop. And I think it got Young going because he just got uh, at both ends of the. Whoa! Yes! Pitt is very athletic. One interesting stat, I think, as we looked at tonight's game and the absolute brutal beating that Pitt has given West Virginia in the paint, they are number one in the Big East at 40% behind the line. I mean, you're the best free throw, or your best three-point shooting team percentage-wise in the league, and you don't even need to go to it on the road. You are strong. Stat track showing us clearly. Hit the upper hand. Key categories tonight. Sophomore Alexander 0 for 7 tonight. In the last three games, 17 points. Ruoff not been a factor either. Nice play down low. Butler got three for another two. He's had a nice night. 14 points, a team high for West Virginia. Here's the 1-3-1. One, one. Six minutes and 50 seconds to go. Only 14 points. We're talking about a West Virginia team that can score them in a hurry. Gray's double teamed. And the timeout is called by Jamie Dixon with 21 to shoot here for Pittsburgh. It's 30. Fields getting up a little slow. Okay, how about Aaron Gray's night? He is a force. You can't move him. He's got soft hands. The only thing that's disappointing about his play tonight has been free throws. But he is just a guarantee in there, acknowledging the good pass. Let's take a look now at our select stats brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. 50% from the floor for Pittsburgh. Coming into this game tonight, Panthers so effective, so efficient in many ways, shooting 49.4% so at their per game average, almost on the money. Well, you know, we talked before, West Virginia's lost four games. In every one of those four losses, they shot less than 30% from three points. And tonight, it hasn't even been close to three. But I credit, I credit the pit defense. It's relentless. I told you, it's a full body massage when you make a diagonal cut through the pit defense. They, they got a hold of you. No penetration there for Pittsburgh, so five-second call. But just their fifth turnover of the night. Wow, taking care of the rock. There's Nichols, kick out. Alexander, 
Thought about a three. Young will pop. And hit. All right, 11 points. That's all. 1-3-1. One, one. With Eric. Alexander at the top, and it's a tough defense. Kendall with the four fouls. Gets the feed. Can't convert. Blew off the rebound. Here come the Mountaineers. How about Nichols? First three of the game. And they're not going anywhere here in Morgantown. I saw some Mountaineer fans heading for the exit. Shame on you. 12-3 WVU run and a crowd involved. Kendall looks for Kirk Blatt. Possession now with the Mountaineers. Ruoff with a stuff. Oh, what a defensive play. Comes from behind. Great, great defensive play. Actually, there were a couple of Mountaineers on that one. Now we got a pulse here in Morgantown. What a play by Ruoff on Cook. We'll keep an eye on Frank Young here, Bucky. He's still cramping up and really running around gingerly. Nichols just hit that huge three a moment ago. Is fouled. And Pittsburgh is over the limit. Three throws coming up here, Darius Nichols. Antonio Graves, probably the best perimeter defender for Jamie Dixon's Panthers with the foul. Third one. And they may need him down this stretch with the great perimeter potential of the Mountaineers. Five minutes to go. One more for the great free throw shooter, Darius Nichols, shooting 87%. Third best in the conference coming in. There's Young battling the cramps. Buck, you know that's a lot of pain to deal with. I know, but if I'm John Beeline, you know, I'm not taking him out. I don't care if he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> he's my offense. <laughs> 14-3, Mountaineer run, listen to the crowd. Gray's for Gray, Young, head trick, Alexander from behind, tapped and loose. Mountaineers running, Young finishing. Got to get Fields back in the game, coach. Can Pittsburgh withstand the run? Not quite. Young steps out of bounds. Again, coming from the weak side, a reject, and the Mountaineers are running. Oh, that's a great break. Great spread, great distance. They're pumped out. Pitt has got its hands full. Frank Young, Willis Reed-esque, playing hurt here. Alexander, missed it on a layup. And the crowd was ready to rock the house if he had converted on the baseline. Levance Field back in the game. Let's see if it makes a difference. The general. They're gearing up for a great finish. Graves. In the corner. Look at the night for Sam Young. He's done it again now. A career high 20 points. I got Young off the bench. coach right now. If I'm John Beeline, I'm trying to figure out how I can induce Grant in this guy every night. What a performance. Butler tries to answer. Rattles out. Loose. Frank Young. Cramps it all. He'll head to the free throw line for two. What an effort. For the WVU star who was on that Elite Eight team a couple years back. A few minutes ago, this game was over. Fans were leaving for the parking lot. Head on Route 79 in Morgantown. I prefer a bounce pass there.
or New York College Basketball on the home of all things New York sports. Lauren Stokes and the Hofstra Pride play host to a conference clash with the Dragons at Drexel. Drexel, Hofstra, tomorrow at 7 on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Pontiac Official Performance Machines of the NCAA. By Select Sector Spiders, start weaving a stronger portfolio today. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1-800-THE-MX. By Advance Auto Parts, for the best parts, people, and prices, we're ready in advance. And by PNC, leading the way. What an atmosphere, what a ball game tonight here. In Morgantown, 52-45, Dave Ryan, and Coach Bucky Waters with you. And Bucky, this is all about a rivalry. It's a reason they call this the backyard brawl. Absolutely. We were cautioning all along West Virginia with its capacity for the three, and they've lit this crowd up. Shame on those Mountaineer fans that left early. You can't do West, that, folks. West Virginia right now trying to claim the Lazarus Comeback Award because Pitt was just pounding them. Battling the cramps. Young will shoot. What a huge uh, difference in the second half. All 12 points for Frank Young. They'll have one more. Pitt, no points in the paint the last seven minutes. And that coalesced nicely with the Mountaineer comeback. Gray, a big rebound. Remember, Bucky, the two straight possessions for Pitt. Gray, a great position. Chance for two three-point yep. plays. Yep. Couldn't convert. Looked yep. like the Panthers were in yep. control. Yep. yep. Good point, Dave. Big turnaround since then, though. Here's Graves. Ramon has popped a couple threes. Pittsburgh's got to get the ball back to Gray. Back inside. Ramon, thought about the three. Graves, the double team. Eight to shoot. He and Pitt in trouble here. Rough, good defense. He's tied up. Possession there out of Pittsburgh, but only five to shoot here, Bucky. Dixon trying to alert his team to that fact. I'm not sure they're looking at him. Intense defense for West Virginia. They have cranked it up several notches here. Fields some trouble. Gets off the shot. Too strong. Ruoff, a rebound. Now it's running the other way for West Virginia. Young. Three ball really will set this house in an uproar and feels the rebound. Number three to go in regulation. West Virginia now in a matchup. Two, three. Pitt can't get too cautious here. They got to forget about the clock. They got to score. Gray got bumped by Butler, then got free too far into the basket, and he was fouled, which isn't a bad thing for West Virginia because Gray not a great free throw shooter. Well, he hasn't been tonight. He was 61 coming in, but he has uh, not looked good at the line. And when you're, when you're at this point in the game, it's a turnover. 0-4-4. Four, four. Free throw numbers for each team. Gray finally hits one from the strike. Well, that was a great-looking stroke, too. The guys Bucky talked about lost a lot of weight. He's worked hard in the weight room to make him a lot more attractive to the NBA scouts. That will help, certainly. Two big free throws for uh, Pitt Fields. Will be a first-round draft pick in the NBA draft coming up, Aaron Gray. Big suddenly back at nine. Crowd back out of it. Cut you off. Shit. Fields makes a oh. nice play. What a nice play from the weak side. That's why they call him the general. He sees all, and he's unselfish. That's a big turnover, just over two to go. Nine points. Two off pumps, Ronald Ramon. Low to the free throw line. He's played in all the games this year off the bench. His father Ricardo, a pro basketball player in the DR Dominican Republic, as we told you about earlier, spent a month <laughs> this past summer in Pittsburgh. That's quite a story. He ran kind of a boot camp for Ronald and some teammates. So have another free throw. Put them through the rigors of 
very difficult off-season training. And a lot of teammates and some other college players from the area joined in. They said it was tough. Gets the roll. Pitt trying to win its fifth straight on the road. They have been very good at the free throw line under pressure. And they're going to need that. Uh, they're going to need that capacity tonight before this one's over. Here's Butler outside the arc. Graves out on him. Alexander with Graves on him. <laughs> a three, big miss. Gray, a huge rebound for Pitt. Just over 90 seconds to go, and they lead by 11. Got to have your foul priorities now. Gray may not want to touch that ball. Graves for Young. Got to be the player of the game for Pitt. 20 points, a career high. Three and a half minutes now, Bucky. No points for the Mountaineers. After they made a great comeback. Feels off the glass. Oh, that hurt. That was a dagger. With the left, his first field goal of the night could not come at a better time for Pitt to help put it away. Now Alexander tries to answer way short. Raises the twine on the air ball. And Pittsburgh in the driver's seat here to win another game and stay atop the Big East Conference. They go home from here for three. Ramon double teamed by Butler, no whistle. And finally you have a foul call as Gray got loose, but that hoop will not count. Pittsburgh trying to win its 21st and go 9-1 and one in Big East play. And Bucky, to me, the most impressive stat for Jamie Dixon's team, they are 5-0 and oh if they hang on tonight. Big East road play this year. No one can win in the conference on the road but these guys. Yep, and it's defense and it's experience. Great guard play, great guard play, and a big fella that knows how to <laughs> the control the paint. They're going to be hard to handle all year. Wellington Smith has checked in late here for WVU. Ramon has one more. The first that story up about his father, who's a professional basketball player from Latin America. See the upcoming games. Ronald was rehabbing a shoulder injury. That's why dad came in to help him out. So that boot camp over the summer worked pretty well for all concerned. So Pittsburgh, a couple games at home. Providence, Tim Welsh's team, Buck, you know easy matter there. Jeff McDermott, a great year in Louisville, playing very well for Rick Pitino. Well, you look at the coaches and the, and the marquee names in this league. You know, we talked earlier, what makes a rivalry? Well, if I'm looking at my schedule, it's Connecticut, Syracuse, Louisville, <laughs> you know, Cincinnati. Uh, but there's a, there's a couple on that schedule that your fans put a circle around. And for West Virginia and Pitt, it's each other. 30 ticks to go. Stand between Pitt and another win. You off? Does hit and a timeout call. So the 11 game home win streak for WVU apparently will come to an end tonight. It has been a wild one, Bucky, to watch from here at the WVU Coliseum. Early start, Sam Young. Alley oop, finish. Despite being the despite being the best three-point percentage shooting team, Pitt relied on its inside game. And then the Mountaineers got hot and ignited this Coliseum, but it was short-lived. This is the dagger. The Vansfield penetrates the defense. The Mountaineers look at the double team, let the little fellow, the general, slip through. And it's out of reach now for West Virginia. Jamie Dixon told us before the game today how impressed he's been with how unselfish this team is. How many different players contribute, and the perfect road record will continue. WVU will suffer its first Big East home loss. And an 11-0 run, Bucky, for Pitt. After it was only a four-point game, they're going to finish this one off, winning 60-47. Big-time road win for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Very, very disappointing for a West Virginia team that, uh, that felt it could get it done and has had success against Pitt. But the defense, the guards, and the inside game of the Panthers was too much. He's the man of the moment right there, number 23 in the dark uniform, Sam Young. Career high, 28 points. Aaron Grant Pitt will win another one. 60-47 is the final. Tonight's game produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television.
for Bucky Waters. It's Dave Ryan saying so long from Morgantown, West Virginia. This backyard wall goes the pit.